Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Hello. 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 Greeting to everyone. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Okay. <laughs> Great. Very nice to see you. Many familiar faces. Haven't mm -hmm. seen for some time. <laughs> Lovely to see you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah. So we will uh, start uh, this gathering and uh, we will start uh, with the, uh, you know, a few words from me. Importance of setting the right uh, motivation, uh, not only, you know, here to participate, but also, you know, in our daily lives, in our everyday lives, you know, in the morning, during the day, and in the evening, uh, you know, every now and then to make sure we have the right uh, thought, right states of mind, or we can say right motivation or intention when we, either we live you know, alone, or when we interact with the other living beings, uh, some kind of special activities or routine events. As we all know, all the time, try to interact with the others with the right positive sets of mind, which is very, very crucial. And uh, for us, uh, you know, most of all of us follow the teachings of the Buddha. And also within the teachings of the Buddha, we follow Bodhisattva teachings. Uh, and also many of us, you know, practice Buddhist Vajrayana teachings. In that case, you know, the as a follower of the teachings of the Buddha, uh, holding the refuge, the mind taking refuge uh, in three jewels, you know, uh, in the morning, during the day, in the evening, whenever there is a, a opportunity, you know, all the time to, to think, to feel the Buddha Dharma and the Sangha are the, our main refuge. Though we may use, uh, you know, worldly uh, means and methods to enhance our, uh, you know, the uh, joys, happiness, uh, fulfillment, to reduce challenges, difficulties, but, uh, you know, as a follower of the teachings of the Buddha, our, you know, uh, to really to fulfill our desire, our yearning, longing, you know, the, uh, the main uh, solution, long-term solution is, you know, taking refuge in three jewels. Also to overcome, you know, that deep-rooted uh, difficulties. I heard you are having discussion about how to enhance, you know, the keep or how to keep the heat not losing. <laughs> so yes, we should use those whatever solutions are there, but uh, you know, those are the important solutions to overcome temporary challenges, difficulties. But, uh, you know, for the long term, to overcome uh, those, uh, the challenges and difficulties, then uh, we should think about the three jewels. Buddha, Dharma, Sangha, either my refuge. 
the means and methods, solutions. And then also all the time to remind ourselves, you know, the bodhicitta, the mind of enlightenment, the altruistic awakened mind. In other words, mind which has the ability uh, to think well beings of others, well beings of others. Of course, our own well being is important. Our family members, our, you know, uh, parents, uh, grandparents, grandchildren, their welfares are important and we should uh, think about, we should take care about them. But it is equally important to think welfares of others, you know, try to have the ability to extend, you know, that kind of supportive attitude uh, mental state for wider uh, community, wider, you know, the society, living beings. And uh, that is here the essence of uh, the altruistic awakened mind, bodhicitta. So those two, uh, refuge, mind taking refuge, and uh, the altruistic awakened mind, these two minds uh, try to bring all the time close to our daily uh, well living, well thinking, well interacting with others, and that way uh, we will we will experience, you know, ourselves will experience the benefit, the benefits of following the teachings of the Buddha and the benefit of following the Bodhisattva and the teachings. And, you know, the, and our family members, uh, our colleagues, our friends will also benefit from that when we live our lives with these two uh, mental states, refuge and bodhicitta. So that is, you know, how how we are going to start our this gathering, just saying those four lines, uh, or I think I'm sure all of you know those four lines, uh, as I always uh, suggest, you know, that when we say those formula, use those formula, you know, like four lines, Sanjay Chodha, or in other language, or in other version, always, you know, Say when we, when we are happy to say, happy to chant, always, you know, what we are saying, try to, um, bring into our ear and down to our, our heart. Try to connect the meaning of the, those words, those lines to our heart. In that way, we will learn in a very, uh, very nice, very, uh, very, uh, constructive habits. Otherwise, you know, in monastery, we have a, and I'm sure I have shared this to you before. In monastery, we have a, a nice, uh, is it nice or not? I mean, anyway, I don't know whether it's nice or not. We have an expression to some of those monks, you know, like me, to the all the time, cha, 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 say things. But not doing that much what, what I'm saying it. And to those monks, we have a, you know, nickname. Nickname is because in the monastery, you know, uh, particularly in Tibetan monasteries, they have a, we have a long horn to make a really, really loud you know, noise for the, particularly when we do some Vajrayana teeth practices, you know, really loud, uh, last three days. You know, my ear is nearly gone <laughs> because whole three days that we have this puja, you know, uh, yearly annual puja. So that, you know, that goes only on the one direction, never come back. The, the two monks, you know, with their entire strength blows the, you know, the horn and it has a very loud and sounds go that uh, other direction. So that is, 
at a nickname, you know, when we say things but not to do it, what you're saying. And that, that, that is, and that is, there is a risk we may end up in that way, you know, all the time say the prayers, but not very much what the meaning of the prayers not very much relate to our heart and our action. So that is something very, very helpful. I'm sure many of you know this. Uh, just to remind ourselves, mm, you know, uh, so we'll say the refuge and bodhicitta lines three times. And while we are saying that, those lines, uh, you know, try to hold refuge, minds taking refuge in three jewels, Buddha or Buddhas as our teacher, mentors, Dharma, the teachings that uh, apply uh, in our daily lives, apply to our actions of the body, speech and mind, to experience, to, to actualize within ourselves, to live with the Dharma and to take refuge in Sangha to you know, the Sangha members, not necessarily ordained monks and nuns, but uh, very loosely speaking, people who try to live their life according to the teachings of the Buddha. So those people are our spiritual friends, supporters, whom that we can, uh, you know, see as a role model to look up, you know. And to do that, take refuge in three jewels and uh, to, uh, as I just said earlier, you know, to overcome, to overcome root of the difficulties. Uh, that is, you know, those three poisons, attachment, aversion, and ignorance. Those are the root of, roots of our difficulties. So to overcome the, the, these three poisons, we go for refuge. And not only our, our own, that, you know, uh, root of the problems, but also other, other living beings, you know. You know. So think about that you know, when we say uh, the refuge ones. And also holds the bodhicitta. At least, at least to feel from the heart. Even if, even if it's just a few seconds, but uh, you know, hold from the heart, you know, to our life to support, support all living beings. At this stage, not to, not to, not to ask question whether I have the ability or not, whether I have the res resources or not, you know, not to ask that kind of question at this stage. Just simply hold that altruistic mind as a, you know, the, here when we say those four lines together. Mm -hmm. Sanje Chetan Soji Chonamala Chanjo Pado Tane Jatan Dagi Chin Soji Be Chonamala Dola Penje Sanje Dobarancho Sanje Chedan Soji Chonamala Chanjo Pado Dane Jato Che Dagi Jin Soji Be Chonamala Dola Penje Sanje Dobara Sanje Chedan Soji Chonamala Chanjo Pado Tane Jato Che 
Tagi jenso jebe tsona mangi Gala kenje sanje dobara with the refuge and the bodhicitta mind as our main motivation, intention, how we want to spend our life and the uh, you know, uh, reason that we are gathering here, uh, we will say Chenresik uh, Mantra on Mani and uh, when we say the mantra, uh, from the heart, bring a strong sense of uh, loving kindness, great compassion, and then, you know, with the mantra station, imagine that your loving kindness and great compassion, uh, you know, is rich towards all living beings. Living beings, who, you know, would like to have, you know, like to have sincere, uh, like to have a genuine happiness, long lasting happiness, and don't want to experience any form, any levels of difficulties, sufferings. Yet, for certain reasons, you know, they struggle to experience genuine happiness, lack of that kind of genuine happiness. Uh, every now and then, uh, they experience uh, challenges, difficulties, fears, concerns, worries, and so forth. So, saying the mantra, we share, we express our, you know, from our heart, express loving kindness and great compassion towards all living beings, and particularly those living beings who are going through very gross uh, challenges, difficulties, man-made sufferings such as war, famine, lost their family members and so forth. And you know the, so to 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 think about uh, you know the sharing, expressing our sincere loving kindness and great compassion.
gathering we all are uh, staying living uh, in the individuals flats or houses or wherever and some maybe in the different countries but uh, through this modern technology we are able to share you know uh, this gathering and uh, I've been thinking about to have this kind of gathering very often, uh, but uh, you know the, there are so many other things, uh, you know that are that need my attention, and 
all the time, you know, uh, push back to, you know, to have this kind of gathering. And so at this time, I'm happy to have this and next, uh, next week, next Saturday. And I will try Saturday after, a uh, Sunday after, third Sunday. And but it's currently, uh, it seems third Sunday, I'm in, on the way to Dharamsala. And uh, I just check in Dharamsala where I'm going to stay a few, uh, 10 days or 12 days. The, uh, the internet connection. If the internet connection is good, I will, I will lead that class, last Sunday class from Dhamsala. So you will have it. And though it's still in the virtue, <laughs> but you know, from Dhamsala, not from Sarah. And uh, so this is what I'm, you know, uh, uh, the, the monastery where I'm going to go and stay for you know, 10 days. I just ask them the internet connection. Uh, but I may doors off. That is the day I'll, I'll arrive there. So it's long journey. <laughs> anyway, so very pleased, very happy to see so many, you know, familiar faces and uh, to have this gathering. And uh, uh, as you have seen, you know, the uh, tree and the Peter's, you know, announcement, uh, these three uh, Sundays, uh, I don't know uh, whether we are able to finish or not, but that finishing it in text is not important. But these three, uh, you know, the Sunday, uh, you know, an hour and a half, we are going to read uh, one of the uh, very uh, profound, you know, the uh, texts. Uh, uh, you know, written by this great Indian master, Atisha, uh, who came to Tibet around 10th century common era. And, uh, and, uh, you know, his followers, uh, his direct disciple, Dom Tempa, and they, you know, other, uh, masters. So this group of, led by this great Indian master, uh, Atisha and his Tibetan students and this group of, uh, you know, the practitioners, uh, teacher and students are, uh, were called Kadamba masters and their tradition is called Kadamba traditions, Kadamba traditions. And, uh, you know, it has why that tradition is called Kadamba tradition. There are many explanations, but, uh, one of the common explanation is ga. Ga literally it means the uh, te teachings of the Buddha. You know the, that collections of the teachings of the historical Buddha or attributed to the historical Buddha. You know in Tibetan it is called ga. In Sanskrit it is called sutra. Instead of in sutra, and in, in Tibetan it is called ga. And Ka, mm -hmm. uh, Damba, Dam, you know, uh, Dam literally means, you know, the, uh, what you call the, uh, uh, instruction or, you know, the, uh, mm, yeah, instruction, mm, instruction. So this tradition is called Katamba tradition uh, because led by, you know, uh, this great Indian master, Atisha, and his Tibetan followers, they, they follow very closely to the sutras, with the sutras, as a their instruction, how to live their life, how to interact with the other living beings, how to, you know, how to handle Samsaric challenges, you know, the, uh, and how to, you know, serve, uh, other living beings. And they close, they, they follow very closely according to the sutra, according to the, you know, the teachings that are attributed to the Buddha. And therefore they are called Kadamba. The tradition is Kadamba tradition. 
and the masters and the disciples are called Kadamba masters. And that is the text that we are reading. And I'm sure many of you, you know, know this. Uh, our friend, uh, Geshe Thubdin Jimba has put it, these two, you know, uh, texts in his collections called Kadamba, you know, the book of Kadamba. There is two volumes, two volumes, you know, this, uh, as you know, hmm? uh, which is very, very big. Uh, I, 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 so far I've shown, shown you only the <laughs> front. But I don't want to show you the entire thickness of the book. <laughs> uh, anyway, we're not going to read the entire text. We are going to read a, a, a just one uh, out of these so many chapters, you know, many chapters we are going to read during this three Sundays or maybe a little bit longer, we'll read one chapter, which is very, very nice chapter, beautiful. And of course, all the chapters are very nice, beautiful, but we are going to read one mm, chapter from there. And this chapter uh, in English, it is in the chapter, mm, uh, uh, chapter 15, uh, chapter 15. And chapter 15 is called how to train the mind within the uh, expanse of appearance, emptiness, and, uh, and empty echoes. And that is the name of the chapter. Chapter itself is the uh, 15th uh, out of, you know, these 23 chapters and uh, the 15th chapter that we are really going to read. It is called how to train the mind within the expense of appearance, emptiness, and empty echoes. Echoes. So that is the chapter's name. So this, you know, uh, the teaching is called Katamba teaching. It has a two uh, sort of sections, two sections. And, uh, you know, instead of me using my uh, broken English, I will, you know, the, read the Jimba's, you know, the translation. Mm -hmm. The first part is called the, the father, the father teachings, the father teaching, which is the first part. And the second part is called the son teachings. So father and son, the, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the father teachings, it has, uh, uh, you know, in, not including the main, not including the main text, but, uh, you know, there are, uh, uh, what you call the 23 chapters, 23 chapters. So we are out of the 23, we are reading the 15th chapter. And out of, there are two parts in this book. First part is called uh, the father teachings, and the second part is called son teachings. So we are reading the father teaching section. So father here it it is refers to it is so I will read this uh, straight away. It is easier uh, instead of going through here. Jibba put it very nicely. It says uh, in people who have the book. It is on the uh, page 10, uh, while Jimba, uh, in the section of introduction, it says, the book of Katamba, in its uh, present uh, version, the heart of the book of Katamba is two distinct but interrelated sets of teachings enshrined in the volume one and the two, respectively. The first, is the father teachings. So now I'm, I'm reading why this first part is called father teaching. Who is that father and who is that son? So just to make a little bit, you know, the, his, uh, the, the, the background of the text. And here Jimba says, the first is the father teachings, so called because the teachings Contain, con, contained uh, therein were given in the response to questions posed to Master Atisha by Father Domtumba. 
So Atisha, as I just mentioned, this great Indian master who is, we can say, the founder of the you know, Kadamba tradition uh, started around the 10th century common era. So Atisha. And then this, you know, the, who asked the question is called Dom Tempa, who who was a Tibetan uh, man. And among uh, Atisha's, you know, uh, many great Tibetan followers, Dom Tempa is the principal disciples of Atisha, you know, this great Indian master's main disciple is called Dom Tempa. Dom Tempa. Uh, and uh, Dom Tempa is called father. Instead of Atisha is called father, here Dom Tempa is called father. So father Dom Tempa asked question to uh, his teacher Atisha. His teacher Atisha. So because Atisha wrote a text which is also in this collection which is called the jewel, Gar jewel garland of um, dialogues that is the atisha's main text and based on that text dom temba asked questions to atisha and atisha responds in that dialogue there are uh, what you call the 23 uh, chapters and our one is the 15th chapter 15th chapter okay so that is the uh, the first part of the text which is called you know the father teachings why it is called father teaching Dom Demba is the principal disciples of the Atisha and therefore Dom Demba is called father all the other Tibetan followers of Atisha, they all follow Dom Temba. Dom Temba is, the, you know, though Dom Temba himself is the you know, disciple of Atisha, but the, those all the Tibetan followers of this tradition see the Dom Temba as the like the key figure. So therefore, Dom Temba is called father. So when Dom Temba asks questions to Atisha and Atisha responds to the, those questions and those response questions and uh, those response are called the father teachings, the father teachings. Then the second part, which is called the sun teachings, the sun teachings. Here the sun teaching, it is that second part is called sun teachings. Some of, particularly they're here uh, pointed out now, while the second is the sun teachings, the teachings are given in respond to questions posed by Atisha and the Dom's spiritual sons. So these spiritual sons here you refer to Mok Lekveshara, one of the great uh, you know, Tibetan uh, uh, teachers uh, in that time, around uh, 10th century. Really, really this uh, called, it seems a very, very sharp mind and extremely scholar and a great practitioner in Kadamba tradition, Mokleveshera. And Tundu uh, Yongdun, uh, so those two ask questions to Dom Tempa, not Atisha, both are, though both are disciples of Atisha and Dom Tempa, but the questions are asked to Dom, that, that Tibetan, the main principal disciple of the Atisha. So they, these two, you know, uh, um, Kadamba master, Mok Lekwe uh, and the, you know, Yongdu Tsundu, uh, yeah, Kongdu Tsundu. So these two, ask questions to Dom and when Dom responds to their questions, that group of teachings is called Sun teachings. But both are in a Kadamba in this text and also the second text. So that's just simply 
to say a little bit the background of the text, which is very nice. So our reading is on the uh, chapter uh, chapter fifteen, chapter fifteen, and I will just read a little bit Jimbo's, you know, uh, his uh, in the introduction. There's a nice uh, where's that one? Mm. He touched briefly each chapter, what what each chapter uh, teaches. So I'll read this, then we'll we'll read the main chapter. So in the introduction, Jimbo's introduction, page sixteen, end of that page sixteen, uh, he says this. This this is followed in chapter fifteen. That with chapter that we are going to read, this this is followed in chapter fifteen uh, with tools for dealing with adverse situations, such as being criticized. It is in this chapter, that is chapter fifteen, that we find famous story of a householder who is magically transported to a totally unknown place where he settles down and starts a family. Following, following a tragedy that results in the death of his entire new family, the grieving householder suddenly finds himself back at his uh, original home. Much to, much to his dismay, his first wife has not, not even missed him, for in the fact he never left his original home and he Whole, um, his whole experience with a parallel family was nothing more than a, a magician's deception. So that is the chapter that we are going to read. And this story, the just Jimba briefly touched on that we are going to look at more detail. Uh, I heard when I was six, sixteen, seventeen years old. Uh, while I was studying, you know, the um, perfection of Western Sutra uh, with the commentary of many great Indian masters and Tibetan masters. And, uh, you know, the, the, the teacher who told us this story, you know, the, even still, I, you know, vividly I sort of have in my, in my, in my, in my head, still have a very vivid way he told the place, how he told, and my own sort of, you know, that kind of briefly, you know, that entire my life, entire my sort of, my existence, you know, goes with that story. And because the master, he was extremely, uh, what you call, the skillful. To tell this kind of story, and so that that is something. Have a, I, I have a, some my personal experience with this story. Okay, so that is the chapter that we are going to read. And as I said, the chapter itself is called "How to Train the Mind Within the Expense of Appearances." Appearance. So appearance in the sense, you know, how. What we see, what we hear, what we smell, what we taste, what we touch, what we, you know, the, uh, remember, recall, wish, yearning, longing, fear, all those things. That is referring to, you know, appearance. Appearance. And uh, emptiness. Then, relation to those multi layers of appearances that we have in our life, not only one whole life, even one day, 
you know, even one day from the morning when he woke up until going to bed. So many things that we, you know, experiences, we remember, we recall, we have wishes, we have hopes and fears and so on and so forth. All these appearances also have a, another phase, which is empty, emptiness. That is, you know, the second one. And the empty echoes, empty echoes, you know, the, uh, in Tibetan, that uh, the third, third, the third, uh, what you call the, you know, the Tatong, uh, Tatong echoes. You know, when we, for example, you know, we are building a new, uh, new, new sort of, anyway, uh, building is completely empty. So when you say in the talk, there's an echo, you know, comes back what you are saying, you know, what, and uh, that is the echo. So, you know, the, we are talking about in our, in our daily life, when we interact, when we interact with the appearances, and these appearances, all layers of appearances, have the, the nature of emptiness. Yet, you know, they have an impact, like the echo, you know, in the empty hole, when we make noise, it brings back the, our noise, whatever we say, it has an impact. So this is what, uh, you know, the, uh, the title of that, you know, the, uh, 자동기 망도, 로 기다리잖아. So how, in that kind of reality, in that kind of fact, in our daily lives, whether we, whether we are aware of not, whether we are you know, they're able to understand that kind of nature or not. You know, that is the fact in these three, you know, aspects, what the, uh, the, the, the three sort of, uh, you know, the, uh, appearances, appearance, empty, uh, emptiness and empty echo in that kind of reality. How should we train our life, uh, train our mind? Because, you know, we need to learn not to be, not to be, you know, affected by the appearances, by the mere appearances. And many of us do, you know, our, our daily uh, experiences, joys, happiness, fulfillment, disappointment, Fear, concern, worrying, all those, you know, that we experience, even if some, sometimes within a, within a, within an hour, you know, these are, uh, arise from the appearance. Different, you know, and that is how, and really something useful, useful to think. And we need to hear the training, you know, when it says how to train mind within the expense. Within the expense, the meaning is within that kind of reality, that kind of nature. It is not saying appearances are not exist. You know, it's not saying appearances are not exist. Appearances are there. So in that, that is something uh, very, very uh, useful or helpful to know. So the, the first, uh, uh, that paragraph is, you know, more or less, uh, paying a brief homage, you know, being, paying a brief homage, uh, uh, you know, the, because here, as you know, the section that we are reading is father, the father's, father teaching. So it means, you know, uh, Dom Tumba. Dom Tumba, uh, asked, particularly this case, Dom Tumba asked question 
to Atisha. To Atisha. So now we will see the questions coming in here, and then we will, we will see the uh, Atisha's respond to. And he, therefore, at the beginning, there's one verse which Dom Temba pay homage, and that is what uh, here it says. Again, in the celestial mansion of such a sublime teacher, Dom Temba, and uh, sorry, uh, the, 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 what I'm saying is here, Dom Temba, our teacher, the perfect spiritual friend of all, asked the following uh, question for the benefit of future sentient beings, those uh, intelligence is small. So, in other words, Dom Durba himself understands the, the Atisha's teachings, but he deliberately asks these coming following questions to Atisha in order to benefit to the, you know, the people who have a difficulty to understand Atisha's teachings. So that is what, so this first verse is really very much the verse which putting together, you know, to start the chapter and how, why Dom Temba asked this question. For what reason Dom Temba asked this, these questions to Atisha? Mm -hmm. So here the first question, Master, what is the greatest fault for a practitioner? And this is question asked by Dom Temba, that Tibetan master, to Atisha, that his teacher, Indian master. You know, what is the greatest fault for a practitioner? So this, in her, uh, word, uh, this word practitioner, which is very interesting. You know, he didn't say, what is the greatest fault for a sentient being or for a lay people or for a, you know, but he's just asked, for, the, for a practitioner. And this is something, you know, quite, uh, how to put that question. You know, why that, that particular term is used, practitioner. Mm. You know, in Tibetan it says this, mm. Sang, yeah, Sang refers to, you know, fault or the, you know, the uh, mistakes, you know, that, that is, Tang in Tibetan. Chirba refers to the practitioner. Practitioner. So these Katamba masters, Katamba masters, when they ask questions, their questions are very sharp, very straight, and very much related to himself, his own, what is going on here, or what is going on in front of him. And because mainly this, when I use him, because most of them are male, so that's why I'm using them. Mm -hmm. Then Dom, uh, the, the Atisha, uh, Atisha replies, these afflictions of attachment and aversion seems to be the greatest. So Atisha's answer, you know, is very straight to the point, you know, the question was very straight, you know, for the practitioner, what is the greatest fault? And Tom, uh, the Atisha is saying, you know, afflictions of attachment and aversion seems to be the greatest. So, you know, for us, for us, though the attachment, aversion, you know, are they really very much the key, like the, uh, in the car, like the ignition key to car to move, to start the engine and move. And like, like that, you know, for us in our daily life, when we interact and many of our, or, you know, the uh, challenges and difficulty, you know, the ignition key are the case are the attachment and the aversion, but we don't see that much. We are not that much aware of that because we don't uh, closely, uh, we, we don't do that much observation. We don't do that much analysis 
to analyze where you know, these uh, uh, what you call the uh, difficulties are coming from. And that's what it says. Mm -hmm. Then the second question is, Master, what is the root of attachment and aversion? And aversion? So if the attachment and aversion are the, you know, the main sort of greatest risk, greatest sort of force that the practitioner, you know, uh, uh, face, then where the, these two are coming from? Where these two attachment and, and aversion, where these two are, uh, are you know, uh, risen or uh, arise, arise. So then, it, uh, Atisha, you know, the uh, Atisha answer is: It is the things desired by the monks of the monasteries, and that question is very, you know, uh, very interesting. The uh, question is, you know, the Dramtava uh, asks, what are the root of attachment and aversion? And uh, Atisha's answer is, is saying, it is the things desired by the monks of the monasteries. And that's quite interesting answer. <laughs> so uh, with that question answer, then uh, Dom Tamba asked this next question. Do I not also have this master? So this root of the root or uh, the or the source of attachment and aversion is you know exist in those monks in the monastery. And uh, Dom asked, Do I have that? That root. <laughs> so, as I mentioned earlier, you know, these Kadamba masters, when they talk to each other, when they, you know, express these things, they are very daring. They are very much on the point, not going around or not, you know, in some kind of implication, not in that way, very much at the point, at the point. Hmm? And, uh, the, uh, Atisha's, uh, Atisha's answer is, this can be discerned from the base and uh, from the strength of self-grasping. So now that is now when we when we count three poisons, which are earlier count you know, root of our challenges are those three poisons: attachment, aversion, and ignorance. So now here the Atisha is coming saying. You know, he, Atisha didn't say, no, you have, <laughs> you have the, this source of attachment and aversion. But Atisha says, you know, this, mm -hmm. this can be discerned from the base and uh, from the base and from the strength of self grasping. Mm -hmm. So in Tibetan, she dang dang zi, eh, che jung, no, go better, eh, ko la te che dong, so it says it is up to you know whether you have this root of attachment and uh, attachment and uh, aversion you know when you when you observe when you analyze the base of self grasping and strength of the self grasping. When you analyze, then you will know. You will know whether you have the root of, uh, you know, uh, attachment and aversion. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, what I'm going to do now, uh, and, uh, these questions are very, very clear and doesn't need, uh, don't need that much uh, explanation. Don't need that much. So I left this up to here today, you know, this, uh, uh, what you call the Atisha's, you know, answer to Dom. When Dom asked, do I have that source or the root of attachment and aversion? And then uh, Atisha answered that question, you know, it is. If you observe, if you analyze, 
you will see. You will see whether you have that root, which is the self-grasping, you know, self-grasping. When you analyze the strength uh, the, or the, you know, uh, less strength of the self-grasping, you will see that, whether you have the, you know, the, what you call the, uh, the source or the root of. Mm -hmm. Now then, the, the, instead of reading, remaining, uh, today remaining that those question and answer, I'm going to stop that question, asking question and answer, and I will come back that, you know, next, uh, uh, in our next week. What I'm going to do now is going to read a little bit on that um, actual story, uh, connection to the appearance, relation to the appearance. Appearance, emptiness, we have three points. Appearance, emptiness, and empty echoes. We have those three points. And this, you know, the story will tell us all these three points. The story will tell us the appearance, and the story will tell us emptiness, and this story also will tell us, you know, the uh, empty echo, empty echo. And that is really uh, the point of this story. Hmm? And here the story is also written in a form of, you know, in Tibetan it is written in a form of what you call the uh, stanzas uh, or in a, you know, what you call the uh, line, not loose sort of, you know, paragraph. It is in a as stanzas. But uh, what I will do when I read the story, I will follow the, my Tibetan text instead of English, which is uh, easier for me. Hmm? Uh, so story uh, is, you know, actually I was told uh, it is within the sutra. It is within the sutra. You know, the, in other words, the teachings that are uh, attributed to historical Buddha uh, Gautama. So the story is in one of the sutras. But here, Dom Tum, uh, Atisha tells the story, this beautiful story, to uh, Dom to understand the appearance, emptiness, and uh, what you call the empty echo. And uh, so that is the... Mm, now the the place where this uh, entire you know what you call the uh, you know the uh, story or entire sort of um, activity uh, took place is place called Savasti. As you know, many of you or some of you have uh, visited Savasti with me. Uh, you know the place where. Buddha spent, historical Buddha spent uh, nearly 25 years of his rain, yearly reigning retreat. Do you remember some of us stay in a, um, what you call the uh, Korean uh, temple and uh, then very hot uh, to walk from the Korean temple to the Sarvasti and uh, uh, we had uh, lots of trouble because entrance fee is relatively high, and the, the guy who you know holds the uh, uh, check the entrance fee ticket and so forth, you know, the, he said, once you go out, you have to buy a new one. So it costs I think about two dollars or three dollars. Those days, uh, English pounds was very strong. I think one uh, one dollar would uh, one pound make it two dollars. I remember that. Very clearly. So, so we, instead of, you know, coming, uh, morning visiting the Sarvasti and doing the prayer, instead of doing that, we all went morning and stay there, though it's very hot under the tree shade. And then somebody from the Korean temple kindly bring us our lunch. And uh, do you remember that some of you are here? I think Sue was there too. And so Alton and some of us there. Anyway, uh, so th that story is take, taking place in Sarvasti, and uh, the
the, there are two people are involved. One is called um, uh, Chandra Baba Bhatra, Chandra Bhatra, and the other other person is called uh, Shriman. So those are the the place is in Sarvasti, uh, where not necessarily the place where Buddha you know spent, but in that area. And the two families are involved, and both are very good friends. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, so this uh, Chandra Bhatra who, uh, who was very clever magician and able to do lots of things and very clever and uh, his friend this uh, Shariman was poor and has a family, a wife and three children. And his, 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 his you know, the, uh, what you call the, the family's main source, income source is, you know, he, uh, he, him and his, his wife make, uh, prep from the grass. You know, some of you know, in India, you know, they make, uh, very, very strong, what you call the row with the grass in the, uh, uh, twisting and so forth. So this man, the poor, uh, uh, Shriman, him and his, his wife, their main income is making thread and go to sell. And uh, this, his friend, Chandabhatra, really, truly want, wants to help you know, his friend, the poor, poor family, uh, Shreeman. But uh, Shreeman was very simple man. Uh, doesn't want to do uh, or involve that much with his friend, you know, very clever musician and so forth. So that, that is the background of the, uh, the two, fam two, two friends. And, uh, you know, this Chandrabhatra, Chan Chan he really thought he wants to help, but he doesn't know how to help to his friend, his, his friend, his poor family. So he thought, you know, because uh, Chandrabhatra knows, uh, he's, he is a magician and he knows how to trick and so forth. And, it, you know, uh, Chandrabhatra said you know, to his to his friends, quite well. You should learn magic from me. I will teach you the magic, and you can go to the town and the cities, perform your magic, and you can, you know, get uh, good income. But uh, Shriman said, "No, no, no. I'm happy with my this simple life, magic, <laughs> so like that." But at the same time, you know the. And uh, this poor family, this guy, Shriman, he loves having horse, nice, good horse. He loves that. But he hasn't got the horse. So uh, the Chandrabhatra thought, okay, I will trick him, use my magic, and you know, teach him the, the, the power of the magic. And then he will learn you know, my magic, you know, how to do the magic, magician things, and then he, his family income will, you know, get better, then he will learn that. So that is the next step. <laughs> and uh, one day, the, this poor family, the, you know, they finish their lunch, and uh, 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 Shariman, he is making his thread, outside their house and they have a tent living in a tent and his wife was washing the dishes outside you know in India they do that so in the past not now they're not that much you know washing the dishes outside the pots and so forth and himself was making the you know threat to sell to the town and his Three children are playing just outside their tent. And uh, 
you know, the uh, Chandra Bhatta came with the really with the beautiful white horse. Very, very beautiful white horse. And, uh, you know, just tied over there and then talked to uh, his friend Sh- uh, Shariman. And uh, Shariman said, wow, that's really, really, really beautiful horse. Beautiful horse. And, uh, you know, the Chandra Bhatta said, yes, it is. Good. If you want, you can ride. You know, you can ride if you want. And, uh, you know, Shariman could not resist to have a one ride with this amazing horse. So he got on the horse, suddenly the horse took off and not just beautifully walk, uh, what's called the run, but fly over. Fly, 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 fly. Suddenly, you know, in an island, the Shirema dropped in that island, the horse disappeared. So there's nothing in that horse, uh, in that island. So Shirema was really, really worried how he's going to get back to his family. He has a wife, he has three children, now he is in a really in a different island continent in a small in the middle of the ocean in a small island with the jungle. So he doesn't know what to do. And then he woke up a little bit in the hill and looked down the valley. He saw a smoke coming from the uh, down there, and he walked along that. And then he found a mother and the three daughters, a mother and three daughters. And he asked the mother, you know, what is this island called? And she says, this island is called selflessness. Dhamme, selflessness. This island is called selflessness. Dhammeva, selflessness. You know, this island is called selflessness. And he said, you know, how can I get back to my family? I came from such and such, you know. And she said, there's no way you can get back to your, your place. You are in a different island called Southlessness Island, Bangladesh, you know. And that is the, and then, you know, he said, uh, that she said, I'm the only family in this island. There's no other human in this island. So he completely, you know, uh, despair and suffer a lot. And then, you know, she, this uh, mother offered him, if you want to stay with me, you are welcome. You know, otherwise there's no other place to go. There's no family. There's no other human existing in this island. So he has no choice. Sharima has no choice, so he settled down and eventually he married with her youngest daughter out of three. And then they have three kids. Sharima and his, this old lady's three daughters, youngest daughter, between them have three kids. So he settled down there, have a family, new family, have a children, So then, you know, the, one day, his, his, his elder son or daughter was three years old, and the, the middle one is around two or one, and the youngest one is just able to, you know, uh, what you call the, uh, or able to, you know, move a little bit. So he went, he went to take them to the river, not very far from his new family's house, and he was just trying to catch some fish. And suddenly he saw his youngest uh, child was calling and get into the river. And really 
the river carries, carries, carries away his youngest son, the child, and he rushed to, you know, catch, to rescue. And that time, his, the, the second child, which is around one and a half years old, able to walk, follow, but again, you know, uh, what's called, uh, fall into water. And then his third uh, child, which is the eldest, you know, followed that, then suddenly a tiger came and it took away. So he lost almost all his three children. And he suffers a lot. He suffers a lot. So he thought, what I have done, what I have done, what kind of, you know, karma I have created to have this. I lost my first family with it, you know, while everything is there, my wife was there, my children were there, you know, and uh, this horse took me to this island. And uh, I settled down, no choice, no way to return me back. I settled down in this, with this family, now I lost all my three children. How I'm going to, what I'm going to do. So he was really, really in a, a difficult uh, a situation. And he was pulling, pull, you know, pulling his hair out of, you know, sadness, out of desperate that he for you know, Suddenly, the, his friend Chandavatra, you know, dispelled the uh, magic power. And then here, Sharima woke up from the magic in front of his all his previous family. And he, you know, the, uh, his friend Chandra said, what happened? What happened? And uh, you know, Sherima told the entire story. What did happen? How many years he was separated from his wife, his original wife, his three children, and how he got new family, and how to, how those new families are lost their everything. And then you know, Chandra Bhatra said, "Look, you know." Your wife was just cleaning the, you know, dishes. She still hasn't finished that dish, cleaning the dishes. Your children were playing. Look, they are still playing there. And you are making that threat to sell. Still your existing threats are still in that, you know, uh, on the, what called the, uh, next to your, you know, workplace. But he said, no, no, no. I have four new family, have a wife, have a three children, and all those challenges and difficulties, joys and everything, he explained. He said, no, no, look, your wife is here. And so this man, Sharima, was really confused, which was the real? Which was the real? His, you know, existing that wife who was cleaning the dish and having three children playing there, or the three children lost in the water. Which one is the real one? So that is here what we are talking about appearances. Appearances. So, Sharima's life with this new, new, new family for years. He had a new wife, have a three children, raise those three children. These are, he had experienced all those things. And which was the real and which was not real. And which was true and which was not true. And that is the story here. The entire this long, you know, 
which is important one. And in that story, we will learn appearance, emptiness, and also the, what you call the um, empty echo, empty echo. So now that's the end of story. I will not go any further. But here what, what we are talking about is, you know, so-called, you know, uh, what you call the and, and joy, happiness, fulfillment, or on the other hand, sad, despair, despair you know, and uh, challenges. All these things, these that we experience in our daily life, sometimes joys, happiness, fulfillment, sometimes sadness, and so on and so forth, that we experience in our daily life. And that experience is, you know, I'm going to use that word, word, real. Real in the sense we, we feel, we feel joy when we encounter those certain things that we would love to encounter, we love to have. And we feel, we experience, you know, sadness when we encounter certain situations. In that sense, in that, in the sense of what we experience, it is there, these are real. Because we experience. But when we talk about real or true or, you know, and then we need to look at in a different context to this story. You know, Sharim, uh, Sharima has the two families. Which family is real to him and which family is not real? Isn't it? So that is we need to look at uh, in the context of appearance. In our, you uh, know, in, in our uh, everyday lives, in our everyday lives, certain things and events we are able to see, we are able to understand, you know, what they appear to us, how they appear to us. They are not in that, uh, that they do not exist how they appear to us. And we, therefore we are able to call these are false. These are uh, not true. We are able to say that. But the, you know, the, from this story, from this story, Sharima, cannot, could not, able to say, you know, the, having that family in that island, the island of selflessness, he is, he is unable to say, unable to feel, unable to think, this family is not real family. He went through having wife, new wife, having children, having all those things during that period. You know, he is, he is not, he hasn't got even any, sing, any slightest sort of doubt whether this is the real family or not. And similar to that in our dream, when we have certain pleasant dream or very unpleasant dream, during the dream we are unable to, I mean, sometimes maybe say, oh, I'm in a dream, I'm having this. But most of the time, we are unable to. Whether we're having joyful dream or unpleasant dream, we go through that. So here we're talking about appearances. So in our life, from the, in my case, since I remember as a Tashi, you know, as, as some of you have heard. Sorry. Yeah, just a few minutes. Uh, you know, the, my earlier 
memories are not necessarily uh, pleasant memories. You know, my earlier memories are very sad or very difficult memories. Seeing every morning, you know, carrying dead bodies while we are in a, my parents are in a transition camp from one being, being refugee, 1960, you know, 1960, when my parents escaped uh, with me from Tibet and we lived in a, you know, near border, uh, Tibet and the Indian border, just across the border. And my parents lived there with, uh, you know, about six, five or six years. I mean, we, we were taken to boarding school. So in the earlier time, I, that, that is one of my early uh, memories. Every morning carrying dead bodies because they cannot cope because of the near place, because of the food, because of the uh, emotion, emotional challenges. And so every, those small can, maybe less than, you know, 500, 600 people, but every morning there might be four or five bodies, dead bodies carried because our, the, that uh, place where we were living is on the way to, you know, where the bodies are uh, burned. So from there to up to now, what I have, you know, near, nearly 65 years, all these experiences that I had from my childhood up to now, you know, approaching 65 years old, all these appearance, you know, the experiences encountering with the different situations, how, which are the real that I can say, which are the not real. But these all are real in the sense I had experienced. I had experienced joys, happiness. Also, I have experienced sadness, difficulties. And same, all of you. In that context, ex in the context of experiencing, these are real. Those refugees are, were passed away, they are real. But uh, where we can draw the line, you know, which are not real, compared to those two families to Shil to Shilima, which is not real family, which is not real his real wife, or which which are the not his real children. Very, very difficult for him. During that period, while he is in a under the magician's power, real he got a new family, new you know, three children. Is working, bringing them up, that is real. Isn't it? So, um, yeah, so today, not necessarily a very pleasant story, but a very, very powerful story. Powerful in the sense, really, to, uh, to question to our, you know, believe to our grasping this, that, here, there, all those things. You know, the, what is real and what is not real. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway. So we'll leave it here. We'll say 21 Tara Press and then I will see you next Sunday. Om Jet Ma Pama Jomala Chate. Chance to man your mapa, Jeneke Jeloda Jam, Jake some good chitty shedding, Casa Chiwa Lenny Jom, Chance don't get our grand. 
Chanzetuda Chanze Chanzevaya Gawa Kari rave kore shinkamade pendang dewa madu jungwe ne Jere sewa tenzin jato yi Shabe sede pato tenjo je Oh yeah, thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you, Geshe-la. 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 Oh, yeah. Thank you. See you next Sunday. Yeah. Take care, Shala. Take care. Take great care. Bye-bye. 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 Bye. 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 B